This is the Our Technology section on driveworkslive.com. I'm going to select our workflow tech stack. The splash screen introduces DriveWorks. I'm going to click Explore. The layouts of our tech stacks contain navigation to guide you through the sections. They also have subsections, like the ones you can see here. The tech stacks are fully interactive, containing lots of information that you can have a go at. Every time you fill out a form in DriveWorks, you are creating a new specification. These specifications can follow a customizable process, allowing different tasks to be run by different people throughout the specification lifetime. In DriveWorks, we call this specification flow. Specification flow is not only controlling users, groups and permissions through product lifecycle, but also performing any triggered actions that you set up, such as monitoring where the project is up to, sending emails, creating different file types, etc. It also controls the way we move through the configuration process based on decisions and outcomes. This first page shows the Specification Explorer in DriveWorks Administrator. The Specification Explorer is where new specifications are created from projects and existing ones are viewed and, if required, modified. Clicking New in DriveWorks Administrator launches the specification. Specification Flow is a feature in DriveWorks that gives you complete control over customising the specification process or workflow. You have full control over who can do what and when they can do it. In your DriveWorks project, you can set states and configure them for each step of the workflow. You can customise the actions on each state. You can choose what will be created from the specification and when it will happen. And you can decide which users or teams have permission to perform specific actions in the workflow. You can set up conditions for a complete, intelligent workflow. You can see some specification flow examples here. And remember, specification flow is fully customizable. These examples have been created using DriveWorks Administrator. The green box is a running state, and this is typical for things like completing forms. This will include an initial state, which is your starting point. The red box is a pause state and an indicator of where things are up to in your specification whilst waiting for a transition. The blue box is an automatic state. These are similar to pause states, except if DriveWorks Auto Part is running, then the transition will automatically be applied. This might be creating models or drawings or perhaps quotations or other documents. Example 1 is a basic specification flow. Forms are completed and specifications are saved. Example 2 shows a typical example of an approval process, in this case a holiday request. The holiday can be requested in this running state and then submitted. The request is then in the pause state waiting to be reviewed. When the request is reviewed it transitions back to the running state where the holiday is either approved or denied and placed back into the pause state. Example 3 is a more advanced process including iteration and validation loops. The data is entered, the quote is then in the process of being created automatically with DriveWorks Autopilot. The generated quote is then reviewed and either rejected to start again or approved where an automatic state may generate all of the manufacturing details to complete the order of the completed state. Let's have a look at specification macros. Specification macros are a series of tasks that run when triggered based on rules. They can be triggered from a variety of places, including buttons on your input form, specification flow, specification timers, and more. Specification macros are easy to create using the task and conditions toolboxes that are in DriveWorks and configure them based on your rules. This text stack shows some examples. Specification macros are fully customizable. For example, one, this macro automatically generates all the documents in the DriveWorks project and then displays them on the form using the correct names. The documents can then be selected and viewed. In example 2, the macro triggers an action in the specification flow and reports on the status. This macro does two things. Feedback is displayed on the form and an email is sent to the DriveWorks administrator. In example 3, this macro triggers tasks and other macros based on different conditions, whether they are passing or failing. If the condition fails, then this set value macro is run. If it passes, the increment macro is invoked. 
and depending on that value, other macros are shown. Don't forget if you click help on any of these tech stacks, it will launch our comprehensive help files, in this case giving you lots of information about specification macros, as you can see here. We can view this in more detail starting with section 2, which is specification flow. Specification flow consists of three subsections, states, transitions and operations. Let's start with states. As I mentioned earlier, there are three types of states, running which are green, paused which are red and automatic which are blue. I can show you this by means of our guided tour on this tech stack to explain the process. The first state is a running state. Running states are where users interact with the forms. These are shown in green. In this example, the running states are data entry and reviewing. Automatic states are automatically processed in the background by DriveWorks Autopilot. They are shown in blue. In this example, the automatic states are processing and approved. Pause states mean that the specification is saved and can be interacted with. These are shown in red. In this example, the pause states are quoted, rejected, completed. So what about the bits in between the states? These are transitions. Transitions are actions that connect states together. Transitions move a specification from one state to another state and can trigger actions. In this case, a quote is requested. In this example, the review transition will move the specification from the quoted state to the reviewing state. Here, the completed transition moves the specification from the approved state to the completed state. There can be more than one transition on a state. Here, there are two transitions leaving the reviewing state. They are approve and reject. And there are two transitions related to the data entry state. Quote on leaving the state and edit on entering the state. In summary, transitions are one-way connections between states. They set the path a specification takes to the specification flow. It is possible to have multiple transitions out of a single state, leading to different states, as shown here. And it's possible to have multiple transitions leading into a single state. Operations are added to states to trigger actions without moving the specification to another state. In this example, the data entry state has one operation called cancel, so a new specification can be cancelled if needed. The completed state has two operations for this specification. These are copy and delete. So in summary, operations are action buttons triggered on specific states. They can be customised to contain any number of tasks. The most common operations created are delete, copy and archive. But they can be any action you wish to happen in the specification. Section 3 is specification macros. Specification macros can be applied to macro buttons on the user form or triggered from the specification flow. This might also be specification timers or drive 3D click macro entities that run set tasks and can have parameters passed into them using rules or connections. A specification macro is a collection of nodes connected to each other to execute simple and complicated arrangements of logic. This is a node, a rectangular block that can be moved around the specification macros editor. There are two types of nodes, task nodes and condition nodes. Let's start with task nodes. Task nodes are added to the specification macro to perform tasks. You will notice on these previews that they will sometimes have an import box, maybe to locate something or add conditions to a rule. They may ask for names of things that you want to drive or interact with depending on the type of task you are performing. The structure of the nodes makes it easier for you to get the right information into them. These examples include copy close specification, which makes a copy of a specification, copy file, which will copy one of your existing files. Delete simple table rows will delete any data from a specified row in a nominated simple table. Drive constant value gives a value to a constant that you can create and then select. Increment revision number, which might be run every time something is changed, creating a new revision number. Release emails, which will send a specific email based on rules, perhaps to someone in a different team 
to inform them of a new job status. Refresh table will make sure that the specified table is up to date and Run 3D Preview will allow you to preview a specific Drive 3D document when triggered. There are many more task nodes. Condition nodes are added to a specification macro to decide which other nodes should be executed. In a specification flow, these are used to produce a pass or fail, which can take the flow into a new direction. These examples include check value, which determines whether a value is true or false, resulting in a pass or fail, application type, determines which module of DryWorks is currently running, specification type, which checks if the specification is new, existing being edited, or a copy, which might be useful for revision control, is archived, checks to see if the specification has previously been created and archived, is child specification, which checks to see if the specification has been generated as part of a list within another project, and is specification cancelling, checks to see if the current specification has been cancelled which maybe will perform different tasks accordingly. Nodes have connections with inputs and outputs. These are represented by coloured orbs called connection points. All node inputs are placed on the left hand side of the node, shown here on the graphic. All node outputs are placed on the right hand side or the bottom of the node. You can see those here also on the graphic. There are two types of input, green ones for navigation and black ones for data. At the bottom are status task based outputs that change the navigational flow depending on whether the task was successful, successful but contained a warning, or failed. Navigation conditions, the green orbs, control in what order nodes are executed. There are some examples here. When order matters, so nodes are triggered one after each other. When the order doesn't matter, the nodes here are connected together. When the order sometimes matters, so a node is being run, dependent on the results of one of the previous nodes. Resulting from a condition, when a node runs based on a condition, in this case pass or fail, or resulting from multiple conditions. So these are all set to if passed. Sharing conditions. If the result of a node is passed, then the navigation can lead to multiple nodes. And reacting to the task's status, so in this case a task has failed, so an email has been sent to someone to inform them of the error. Data connections are the black orbs. These connections pass data from one node to another. These examples include showing a list of released document names that have been generated, and also storing the name of the current form, which is particularly useful for creating navigation in your workflow. For instance, the forward and backward arrows in our text stacks need to know the name of the current form to show the next and previous. This is the same for the subsection buttons too. Section four contains an interactive walkthrough. This interactive specification flow example shows workflow, rules, macros, and user permissions in action. It is an example of what might happen in a company with salespeople and engineers. Teams and permissions have been set up in the same way as we saw earlier. A member of the sales team needs to log in and create the initial specification. So we start off here at the data entry. I'm logged in as sales and I'm going to click start. I'll fill in some details on this form. And click quote. DriveWorks Autopilot has now picked up the automatic state and generated an email and quote in revision one. The specification is saved in the quoted state only members of the engineering team can see and control the review transition, so we must log in as a member of the engineering team to continue. I will do that by pressing here. So I can now review the specification. So I can see the form here. As a member of the engineering team, I can approve or reject the specification. This choice will determine which transition the specification follows. I'll click reject. So the specification has been rejected and a notification email has been sent. A member of the sales team will now need to make changes to the specification. This will increment the specification revision number. I'll log back in as sales. Go to the edit button and just make a change. And just click quote again. So DriveWorks Autopilot kicks back in and generates two revision quotes.
I can log back in this engineering and review that quote. This time I will approve the specification. The specification has been approved. DriveWorks Autopilot automatically generates all the order specific sales and manufacturing documents and sends another notification email. The specification flow is now moved to completed. This could be copied, deleted or archived using operations. With the specification completed, I could review all the documentation created by DriveWorks. This interactive walkthrough is a great way to see an example of a workflow in action. Section 5 looks at ease of implementation. You can customise your specification flow in DriveWorks Administrator. You can easily manage security by adding, editing or removing users and teams. You can see those here. You can set group and project permissions. You can easily create flows, add, edit and remove states, transitions and operations. Set teams permissions and conditions for transitions and operations. DriveWorks Administrator has a section for implementing specification macros for creating and managing. You can see a preview of it here in the text stack. The command bar contains all actions for adding, renaming and deleting macros and categories. You can keep your macros organised with a fully customisable tree structure. This area is where you build your macro flow. The Specification Tasks Toolbox pane shows a searchable list of all the specification macro tasks. And the Specifications Conditions Toolbox pane shows a list of all the specification macro conditions. All nicely laid out, making creating macros nice and easy. Section 6 is our Where Next section. We have some industry spotlight demos you can try. The two that you can see here are great for seeing specification flow and specification macros in action. DriveWorks workflow will allow you to create great automated configurators that will speed up your manufacturing process whilst improving quality of information. As I said at the start, you have full control over who can do what and when they can do it. DriveWorks workflow is just one of the core technologies that makes DriveWorks the world leading technology solution that it is. You can learn more about the other core under the hood elements that you can see here which make up DriveWorks by exploring our other tech stacks. Explore our technology at driveworkslive.com where you'll also find several configurator sites that you can interact with. And remember they've all been created using DriveWorks technology.